So today we are going to talk about the nervous tissue. This is one of the four basic types of tissues that you find in humans and also animals. And what I want to do is I want to give you the basic or just an overview of what this tissue is so you can go and study in a little bit more detail in classes such as histology. Now, the first thing that you need to know is that the cells of the nervous tissue comprise your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. And the cells of the nervous tissue are called neurons and associated to these main cells you're going to find other cells called supporting cells and these as the name indicate they're there to support these main cells they have supportive functions to these main cells called neurons and we're going to briefly see that at the end of this lecture now the actual physical structures that are comprised of nervous tissue in your central nervous system also known as CNS are your brain and your spinal cord on your peripheral nervous system or the nervous system that is on your periphery or in the edges let's say of your body are the cranial nerves spinal nerves and also the mo motor neurons. Now the actual function of the nervous tissue in your body, uh, these cells are responsible for movement, sensing, and thinking. And by movement I'm talking about the, the fact that these cells are associated to muscle tissue and they're able to communicate between one another and cause movement. But in itself, they do not cause movement. They have to rely on muscle tissue. Now, this is possible because these cells are able or they're specialized into transmitting messages between one another. Now we are going to briefly discuss the functions of the nervous tissue and I just have four here but of course you could probably find a couple more but the main ones I believe are sensory input and integration, controlling muscles and glands, homeostasis and mental activity. So the first functions of the nervous tissues that I would like to talk about is sensory input and integration. Sensory input is the ability that nerve cells have to receive and process information from the external environment. In other words, this is what we talk about or when we talk about sensing. And of course, nervous tissue has the ability, the amazing ability to do so. Integration is a very special characteristic that this tissue has, uh, which allows to integrate impulses that are transmitted from one cell to the other because neurons are able to transmit electrical impulses from one site in the body to another and these cells are also able to then integrate into their cytoplasm let's say these impulses in a very special and specific way that can be discussed in more detail in other lectures but for now it is important to understand that this is one of the function of nervous tissue so another function of the nervous tissue is that it is able to control muscles and some glands as well. Some subtypes of neurons are able to receive signals from your brain and the spinal cord and work as a network that communicates between the, them, these structures, and your muscles. And this will then cause muscle contraction or the actual movement of the muscle and also affect the function of some glands. Another function of the nervous tissue is associated to this word here, homeostasis. I do not know if you've heard about this in classes such as basic biology in high school, but to spare you some time, I have the definition of homeostasis, and this is the body's ability to regulate its inner environment to ensure stability, keyword here, stability or equilibrium, every time there is a change in the outer or external environment. 
An example of this is imagine there is a cold day out there, very low temperatures, and as you know, your body needs to maintain a core temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So the way your body recognizes or senses, better word, to, that the temperature out there is much lower than its core temperature and it needs to, say, produce more heat in order to maintain an equilibrium or the, the same temperature, same core temperature. The way it achieves that is through some organs and the nervous system or the nervous tissue. So that's the way it is able to maintain this equilibrium and it is done through the nervous tissue. The reason why I'm doing this tutorial, this lecture right now, is because I thankfully have a brain. Small or large, I do have one, and you have one as well because you're able to recognize what I'm saying right now. And as you know, and as all scientific community knows by now, is that your brain or the brain is comprised of nervous tissue. So for that reason, you say that one of the functions of the nervous tissue, of course, is involved with mental activity. The thinking process is associated, of course, with nervous tissue. Now, that could lead into a large discussion of how it's done and probably hours of lecturing. But for now, all you need to know is that the nervous tissue is that definitely associated to mental activity. I could probably do an entire lecture on this cell right here, the neuron, which is one of the main cells or the main cells that comprise the nervous tissue. But what I want to do is give you just the basics so it can all come together when you talk or have a general idea of what nervous tissue is. One of the cool things about this type of tissue or this type of cell, the neuron, is that it has processes which are used to communicate or to interact with other nerve cells or with epithelial cells, this, the, these cells that cover surfaces like your skin, and muscle cells. So these cells are, have these dendrites, these extensions here, they're called dendrites, these are the processes that usually communicate with other cells in your body in order to perform other functions. In case of muscle cells, like I explained, it is associated with contraction. In case of epithelial cells, or the cells of your skin, for example, it's associated with sensing. So I would like to discuss a couple of uh, structures that you find in this cell here, the neuron. And if I look here at my illustration here and I circle here or surround the cell that I'm talking about, the neuron. So this is a neuron right here. Now the structures that I would like to discuss, briefly discuss, is these dendrites here. These are the extensions comprised or they are made of the member, the actual membrane of the cell and they are extensions that go all over the place kind of like a root and they are called dendrites and dendrites receive impulses, electrical impulses for example and carry them toward the cell body and the cell body that I'm talking about is the actual place where you're going to find the main constituents of a cell that you know from a cell the nucleus, uh, the mitochondria, everything you're going to find in the cell body of your neuron now at the end, if you go all the way to the end of this cell here, you can still see some dendrites. But these ones are called telodendrites. So this is the end, let's say, electrical impulses will go from my dendrites, follow through the cell body, and then through another structure there we're going to discuss this long structure here, which is called axon and they end at the telodendrites. Telodendrites, as the name indicates, telo means end, so these are the dendrites that are found at the end of the cell.
So this is how the electrical impulses follow. And axons, these, the, this structure here, this long structure from the, that connects, let's say, the cell body to the last part, the talodendrites, this long structure that can even be one meter long, can be a really long structure, this is what carries the impulses away from the cell body. So it's going to go all the way. So this is like an electrical cord, let's say, the axon. Another feature of the neuron here is the synapse. Synapse is a neuronal junction where electrical impulses are transferred from one cell to the other. So as I explained previously, you have a long structure here called the axon that will end communicating with another cell. So there is another neuron here. And the neuronal or neuronal junction or the part where they communicate, say I would have this drawing here illustrating a better communication spot or a neuronal junction where these two cells are communicating, this is where electrical impulses or substances called neurotransmitters are going to be exchanged between these two cells. And this is what we call or describe as a synapse. So I said that the neuron is the main character, let's say, in this movie called nervous tissue. It's the most important cells in the nervous tissue, but without these cells called supporting cells, the neuron would not be able to perform to its fullest. So these are really important cells that are found in the nervous tissue that we need to briefly discuss and to mention in this tutorial where we just go over the basics on nervous tissue, but I believe it is important to talk about them. And in my illustration here of the neuron, these blue structures that I did not mention are supporting cells. So they are supporting cells, S, C, and they're called Schwann cells. And you can have a look if you want to go into more detail about these cells. You can have a look either on your books or in your class. But I'm going to mention a couple of things here in this tutorial as well about these really cool cells. The types of supporting cells that you can find in your nervous system varies according to central nervous system versus peripheral nervous system. And the central nervous system, of course, you have two organs, brain and the spinal cord, which are comprised, of course, by neurons, these main cells called neurons, but they also have supporting cells, and these supporting cells are called neuroglial cells. Now on the peripheral nervous system you find other types of supporting cells usually associated to neurons. One of them is Schwann cells like I mentioned previously and I showed you on the previous slide. And the other type is satellite cells. I mentioned before that, as the name indicates, supporting cells have a supporting function in the nervous system or to neurons. But I would like to give you four basic functions of these cells so you can have an understanding, basic understanding of what is the actual duty of these cells in the nervous tissue. So the first one is they separate neurons from one another. The second one is that they produce this called myelin sheet that you can go and study in a little bit more detail, but it's a special type of sheet that insulates and speeds conduction, conduction in certain types of neurons. And I showed you previously on a couple of slides, uh, previous slides, some Schwann cells they were attached to the axon of the neuron and these Schwann cells are able to produce this myelin sheath which will perform these functions in the neuron. Another function that is worth mentioning is that they provide active phagocytosis to remove cellular debris or cellular waste around that is found in this type of tissue, the nervous tissue. The last one is that they contribute to the brain or the blood-brain barrier 
in the central nervous system. And this is basically the separation of circulation between the blood from the brain extracellular fluid. And this is a big topic that you study in neuroanatomy, for example, or neurohistology. But for now, these are the basic things that you need to know for the nervous tissue if you just want to learn this in the very basics, or at least now you have the good understanding to go and study it in a little bit more detail. Music